And uh, tonight is our uh, Urban Design Forum on Tiny Homes, and we're very thrilled to have four presenters here tonight to, uh, to discuss the work that they're doing uh, in uh, Nashville and the uh, Tennessee region. And I'm not going to, their full bios are on our website for the program, uh, and I'll, let, uh, I'll introduce uh, the group, and then they'll each give presentations. We'll have time for a few short questions after each presentation and then a group uh, question session when they're all completed. So uh, joining us tonight, we have uh, David Latimer, who's with Nashville Tiny Homes. We have Ben Scoot, who's here with us from LP Building Products. We have Sarah Murphy, who's here from Music City Tiny House, and Jeremy Weaver, who actually drove in from Chattanooga to present the work he's doing with the Wind River Tiny Homes. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to David. Hi, I'm David. I like tiny homes. <laughs> uh, my name is David Latimer. I'm actually born and raised in Nashville. Um, I'm currently building two tiny homes, and uh, I'm going to give you a little background about myself and how I got into tiny homes. So I graduated from university uh, with a degree in literature and philosophy. After college, I was interested in pursuing uh, experience over any one career path. So for about 10 years, I traveled all over and lived in a bunch of different places, working in a bunch of different industries. Uh, that whole time, I was making more than enough money, um, collecting cool art and furniture and clothing, and had plenty of stuff to make me happy. Uh, but it didn't. And I couldn't help this nagging, incessant anxiety that continued to swell in me over the years, comparing myself to this person, that person, to this standard, that standard. Uh, and I moved back to Nashville about two and a half years ago. Uh, crushing professional uh, disappointment led me to a year and a half of serious introspection. During that time, I came across the Tiny Home House Movement, and uh, the philosophy drew me in, and uh, it inspired me to dedicate my working life and my working hours to furthering its cause. So why Tiny Homes? It's a great question, and Tiny Homes are all about the why. So the philosophy is, is simple. It's this, life is short. Who amongst us sitting on our deathbeds would rather be surrounded by our stuff rather than our people? calling shared experiences. Tiny homes are about economic responsibility. They're about eliminating debt. They're about finding a work-life balance, about environmental sustainability, about individual autonomy. Um, they're about a lot of things that are very positive. They're both, they're both deeply conservative and deeply progressive. Um, the, the thing downsizing for me has been uh, well, I thought it was impossible, I thought it was going to be impossible. It's been one of the most liberating things I've ever experienced. So, what is a tiny house? You all know, everybody in here probably, but this is kind of the trend. Uh, tiny house is a tiny house on wheels. The foundation is a trailer, uh, 75 to 240 square feet. Uh, they're built the same as a foundation home, the same materials, the same skill, craftsmanship, and by and large, the same codes if it's a quality builder. You have a full kitchen, a full bath, full appliances, it's just smaller. They're an amazing in an urban setting, they're amazing in a rural setting, and they are amazing to take with you wherever you want to go. <laughs> uh, tiny house on foundations is generally called a micro home or cottage, and it's generally anything under a thousand square feet. Uh, they're beautiful, again, built the same way that a larger home is, uh, they're just built with more attention to detail to functionality, to utility. So, again, why tiny homes? There's a number of big problems that are national issues and local issues. Starting with the national issues, and tiny homes are an amazing solution for each of these. So environmental, this is a hot topic, a, a, a lot of debate depending on the generation. I'm not gonna get into climate change and that hot button, but uh, it's undeniable that evidence is indisputable that there is a serious depletion of resources. Um, the deficiency of it, almost anything you look at that is naturally grown and born and of the earth. So, tiny homes are one, one of the most sustainable ways that us as individuals, as consumers, can live, can choose to live in a tiny space. Not just a tiny home on wheels, but a tiny space. The amount of fossil fuels required to power a house uh, is quite a bit, a traditional 2,500 square feet or more. Uh, and then as far as building goes, uh, disrupting a, an industry like building is decades, decades in the making. So we're not trying to do that. We're still using the same, a lot of the same techniques, but we're just using a lot less materials, a lot less resources, and a lot less waste to accomplish our end goal. Economics. So 
we live in a time where income is changing. It's going from labor to capital, right? And the wealth disparity, the income disparity, is worse than it's been since 1928. And I've read a bunch of metrics and studies that says that it's the worst it's been in history, in recorded history. Uh, that's alarming. For anybody who's a student of history and a student of revolution, um, that should, wherever you fall on that spectrum, red flags should be going off. Tiny homes provide a very rich life, right? Tiny living provides a very rich life with very little expense. Um, you can still have this full, adventurous, uh, exciting, enriching life, even on a very low income. And uh, in 2014, I spent $16,000. It was one of the most rewarding, challenging, fulfilling years I've ever had. So, to Nashville, we are in an affordable housing crisis. I don't care who you are or what you say. Uh, it's not just affordable <laughs> housing. That, that, that has a negative stigma. It's attainable housing, right? It's, it's median to young professionals, to young people moving to town, to college graduates. It's hard to find housing. Uh, so from February 2013 to, Jan to uh, September 2014, the median rental price for a house went from $890 to $1,300. It's a 46% increase, and that number is steadily on the rise. Um, see, and, sorry, back. I mean, 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. If you look at a younger generation, it's almost 100%. So a traditional mortgage versus a tiny house. The average 30-year mortgage, uh, the average mortgage is $250,000 right now, right? Roughly. Um, $50,000 to $60,000 for the down payment. Over that 30-year term, you're looking at paying $750 to $1,000 to $1 million uh, in taxes, interest, uh, repairs. That's a lot of money. The average price of a tiny house costs as, the, as much or less than the down payment. Uh, can you imagine what you could do with $750,000 over 30 years? It's a, it's a lot of living, a lot of life. Uh, urban density and community. So uh, people are wanting to move into cities, especially younger people. More and more people, it's the first time in history that more people live in an urban setting than in rural settings. Um, so that takes creative solutions, and that takes a lot of uh, new thinking in order to accommodate that. The thing about tiny houses is they're a solution right now. It's not a hypothetical, it's not a product of development. It's not a what if we do this and this and this. It's like, no, we build one, it works right now. You can put it in undevelopable land. You can put it, it requires very little infrastructure and you can get a lot of these things and still have a lot of green space and open space on a plot of land. Uh, if you go into our studios, that plot of land was considered undevelopable and it became a place for four people to live comfortably. Uh, there was an urban garden, community garden, uh, where everybody in the neighborhood was able to participate in. Uh, here's a concept out in Oregon. You see the, the big common space, right? Well, you can still have a huge dinner party. You can still have a huge party. You can have a soiree. You can do the things you want to do in a bigger home. Um, you just got to look at a little bit in advance. Uh, agriculture is another industry that's changing rapidly. Um, so tiny house communities and urban farms are a, a cool thing that, are, that I see a lot of people working with and developing. Uh, this is Caravan Tiny House Hotel in Portland, another concept in California, and then another little tiny house thing in Oregon. So what are the challenges? The challenges, why aren't tiny homes everywhere? Um, it's, it's a product, a proven product. People are want to, use it, want to live in it right now. Um, but it's, it's something new, and it's zoning and codes are not uh, privy, you're not sure what to do with it, right? And I can understand the reluctance, I can understand you know, the uncertainty. Um, the, the issue is it just makes so much sense, right? And there's got to be a way that we can creatively, we're trying to creatively work uh, in, in a way that makes sense for the city, a way that makes sense for the community, a way that makes sense for individual citizens. Nashville, um, I'm sure you all have seen a couple of these things around town. Uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with them. They do fulfill urban density. Um, and it's a free market society. You should be able to leverage as, and you know, extract as much value from your goods and services as you legally can. Uh, this is fine, but if you're really after urban density, you could put four to eight micro homes on the same single family plot of land, and you actually have green space. You actually can see the trees on the area and the land around. Um, so
So the, the issue is, is, is we want to, we're trying to engage in a, a good conversation, respectful conversation. We'll get creative. If we have to pay a much higher tax rate to allow these things to be legal, to, to be the equivalent of a 2,500 square foot house, great. Um, so here's uh, my first county house in a building, a building in Riverside Village, some of you may have seen it. Um, one of the things I can't stress enough is quality. I would put the quality of my homes and Wind River homes against any builder in the state of Tennessee. Um, because they are in a trailer, and that trailer is going to outlast me uh, without any repair, need for repair. Um, because they're building that trailer, we over engineer them. So they're rated for a hurricane, they're rated for an earthquake. Um, they've got all these little details in them that are going to make them last and withstand almost anything. Um, again, because you're building in a small area, you can afford closed cell, spray foam insulation, hardwood floor, hardwood wall up floor. You can afford to go a little bit all out on the details, the, the, you know, the appliances, the finishes. Uh, and it really is a form of luxury that everyone can afford. Do you want a Viking range? Cool. You want a gold plate of toilet seat? Well, <laughs> uh, so there's me happy that I'm on this down with this deck thing. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a wonderful opportunity here, right? And and I'm excited about it. The future of housing uh, is no doubt tiny. It's going to be a big percentage of housing in the future, no doubt about it. I bet my life on it. Um, we have an opportunity in Nashville to be a leader in that, right? To, to show other people a model of how this can work, and it's exciting, and it's fun, uh, and it's it makes sense economically, it makes sense ethically, it makes sense for the community, it makes sense for the city, and it makes sense for the nation. So again, I'm David, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. How does the plumbing work? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so the question is, how does the plumbing work? It works. It's the same as it does in a normal house, right? Uh, it can. What's that? Where does it go? Where does your plumbing go? <laughs> it goes out to the street. Right, it goes to the city, the city system. So you can hook it up to the city system. Um, this is a conversation that everybody's asked in Tiny Home World. Uh, you will be amazed. First of all, let me just say this. this is, since we're on the gross topic, it is unbelievable how many resources it requires to turn our black water into potable, usable water. It's unbelievable. Just please do a little bit of digging and research. Uh, composting toilets have come a very long way, and that's, that's my, my jam. I'm, uh, I'm encouraging people to use composting toilets. It solves a whole lot of problems, and it's not gross. And, you know, it's, it's nice to be responsible for your own shit, literally. <laughs> do you plan on building microphones as well, and not just tiny ones? Yes, I do eventually, uh, right now. One step at a time, but there's, you know, there's, it's a little bit of a lower hanging fruit because there's not as many codes or not as many zoning regulations, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there an opportunity to be able to like test out a tiny home if you're considering one? Is it something that where you can live in it for a month and try and see if it's for you? Yeah, great question. So I'm actually talking to several different people uh, about setting up like an urban echo village. Um, one of which we might have on Airbnb or have as like a, a exactly that a test ground because it is. There, I mean, make no mistake, it's a huge, huge sea change to go from normal house size or apartment size to a tiny house, and it requires a lot of work, a lot of preparation, and a lot more attention than you thought you'd ever have to give to something. Um, but it is a very deeply, richly rewarding experience. So, and that's that's a, a very important thing to allow people to test it out because it's not for everybody. Absolutely not for everybody. And I'm certainly not trying to force it on everyone. So.